Hey there, continuing on from our coronavirus video, I'm going to cover chest and lung ultrasound or thoracic ultrasound. Um, you know, we use thoracic ultrasound to, to image the lung, pleura, and soft tissues. Lung ultrasound is particularly useful in critically ill patients and patients with infectious respiratory conditions like pneumonia or uh, other conditions like congestive heart failure. Conditions we typically see with ultrasound are uh, very commonly pleural effusion. It's probably the most common indication, at least where I'm at, for chest ultrasound. A pneumonia, pneumothorax, pulmonary edema. Um, in pediatrics, um, diaphragmatic hernia. Though that's usually uh, diagnosed prenatally. You can sometimes uh, scan it postnatally if they did not know. So when scanning uh, chests, uh, you can use linear uh, sector or small curvilinear probes. Um, here are the views. Uh, you can scan anteriorly, pa parasternal. Um, from the base to the apex. Um, then through the auxiliary line, you can scan the anterior auxiliary line and posterior auxiliary line. And then posteriorly, you can uh, scan with a patient either prone or supine, um, prone or upright. You can scan the back uh, from the base to the apex as well. Um, normal ultrasound uh, exhibits A lines which are multiple horizontal reverb artifacts uh, that are equidistant from the pleural line. And you can also see lung sliding with respiration. Uh, you can save image, uh, images of lung movement using M mode or video clips. So there's, a, so there's a lot of signs associated with lung ultrasound. I'm gonna go over them here, um, beginning with A lines. Again, those are the horizontal reverb artifacts. Uh, then there's B lines which are vertical comet tail reverb artifacts that extend from the pleural line all the way down to the bottom of the screen. Uh, one to two uh, per intercostal space is considered normal. Um, if you have more than three or more B lines uh, in two or more intercostal spaces, then that could be indicative of um, alveolar interstitial fluid or fibrosis. Another sign is a seashore sign. Um, this is an M mode through uh, the soft tissues and lung parenchyma with the soft tissues, fat and muscle being um, the, still, the still lines uh, representing the C and the lung movement is a grainier echo texture that appears as sand. The normal pleura consists of parietal and visceral layers. Uh, in between these two layers, there's a thin amount of fluid that reduces friction when with respiration. Uh, any excess of fluid within these two layers is what we would term pleural effusion. A thickened pleural line may be indicative of pneumonia, acute respiratory distress syndrome, or ARDS, or fibrosis. Whereas an irregular line may represent pneumonia or fibrosis. Another sign is lung point sign, which is a highly specific sign that indicates pneumothorax. It involves visualizing the point where the visceral pleura begins to separate from the parietal pleura at the margin of a pneumothorax. Okay, then there's barcode or stratosphere sign uh, this is typically found in patients with pneumothorax. Uh, there is what it appears as just A lines without any lung sliding, no B lines. So the sand-like area that you would see in the seashore sign is replaced just by parallel lines. And it appears like a barcode in a still image. All right, consolidation. Uh, when the lungs are consolidated, they f are, they're filled with fluid. And the lung takes the appearance of the liver, which is called hepatization. You may also have air bronchograms, which would be air bubbles that are still within the bronchioles uh, surrounded by consolidated tissue. Uh, with colored Doppler, you can see blood flow within the pulmonary vessels. Uh, here you can see a consolidated lung with ascites and uh, pleural effusion. Uh, you can also see the diaphragm. Um, you can see that the lung has the appearance of liver. Uh, this is the left side, sagittal and transverse views. On the sagittal view, you can see the lung above the spleen and how they have similar echo textures. Dynamic air bronchograms are usually seen with consolidation. Um, if they're static air bubbles, uh, is usually associated with atelectasis. And atelectasis is a complete or partial collapse of the entire lung or an area or lobe of the lung and can, see, can be seen with consolidation. All right, I said before, pleural effusion is a buildup of fluid between the layers of the pleura. Um, scanning subcostally, it will show fluid above the diaphragm and scanning intercostally will show fluid anterior to the lung and posterior to the echogenic parietal pleural lining. Uh, the fluid can be anechoic or echogenic. In cases of increased exudates, 
and pyema or pus, hemothorax and chylothorax, or is, which is a lymphatic collection in the, in the chest. And there may also be septations. Pleural effusions can have transudative and exudative causes. Uh, transudate is fluid pushed through the capillary due to high pressure within the capillary. Exudate is fluid that leaks around the cells of the capillaries caused by inflammation. Uh, transudate causes of pleural effusion are atelectasis, congestive heart failure, cirrhosis, hypoalbuminemia, peritoneal dialysis, pulmonary embolism, and superior vena cava syndrome. Exudative causes of pleural effusion are broken down into infectious and malignant causes. Infectious being uh, bacterial, fungal, parasitic, uh, viral infection, pneumonias, bronchiectasis, uh, abscess, uh, tuberculosis. And malignant causes are lymphoma, mesothelioma, primary lung cancer, and pulmonary metastasis. Here you can see a moderate pleural effusion with consolidated lung. And uh, using the subphrenic view or subcostal view through the diaphragm. And here, and in the other image, you can see uh, fluid anterior to the lung parenchyma with bet in between the ribs uh, with multiple beelines. Now here's a large volume pleural effusion. Uh, you can see the apex is consolidated. There's lung above the apex and above the diaphragm. All right, so thoracentesis can be performed uh, for diagnostic and therapeutic purposes or both. Um, that's when a uh, needle is um, placed in between the ribs uh, from the posterior side of the body to access the fluid, usually under ultrasound guidance. Um, this fluid can be uh, used to alleviate symptoms, and the fluid can also be sent to pathology to test for cytology, uh, chemistry, and culture. Right, here's a few examples of complex pleural effusions, uh, loculated collections and empyema, which is a paraneumonic effusion usually caused from pneumonia or other infections. Pneumonia is described as an infection of the lungs. It can be caused by bacterial and viral pathogens. Early findings of pneumonia may be multiple beelines and small areas of, of subpleural consolidation. Further infection may lead to consolidations of larger parts of the lung and shred sign, which is an irregular consolidation with air interface. Recent studies have reported that ultrasound is a valid modality in diagnosing pneumonia. In many cases, it is being used in conjunction with radiography. Another study showed that pneumonia was missed in five of 76 children with pneumonia seen on x-ray. So what that tells us is uh, in order to uh, diagnose pneumonia, the, per the, the person performing the ultrasound should be trained in chest ultrasound and they will have a higher success rate in finding pneumonias. Here's a lung with a heterogeneous uh, lung parenchyma. Uh, this parenchyma did have reduced blood flow. Uh, this patient had pneumonia. Uh, he went on to develop necrotizing pneumonia. The lung cancer can lead to chest wall invasion, which results in tumor growth on the pleura. Subpleural tumors can be due to metastatic processes as well. Parenchymal lung lesions can be appreciated if they are not obscured by air-filled lung. In pediatrics, primary tumors, though rare, can be pleural pleural pulmonary blastoma, which is really rare, sarcomas, and metastatic tumors may be from osteosarcoma, Ewing sarcoma, Wilms tumor, hepatoblastoma, and adenoid cystic carcinoma. Uh, here's a young, here's a, uh, here's a patient about 20 years old uh, with a right-sided chest mass with pleural effusion. That was a sarcoma. I have a video on YouTube of a patient I did with a pleural pulmonary blastoma, which is uh, pretty rare in the literature. This was another case. Uh, this patient had a large mass with some vascularity and uh, central echo increased echogenicities. This turned out to be a primary chest neuroblastoma. Neuroblastomas are most commonly seen in the adrenals and pediatrics. This next case is a met metastasis from osteosarcoma. You see large, uh, a large mass in the right chest. This mass started off as a smaller, what appeared to be subpleural consolidation, but given the history of the patient's osteosarcoma, it was believed to be a malignant lesion. Follow-up showed that to be true, and it grew very fast. Here's a video clip of multiple lung lesions with a pleural effusion, with a echogenic pleural effusion on the right. 
All right, onto diaphragmatic hernia. Congenital diaphragmatic hernia is a defect or hole in the diaphragm that allows the abdominal context to herniate into the chest cavity. Most cases are diagnosed prenatally with OB ultrasound. Uh, neonates typically present with respiratory distress acutely after birth. The lung in the affected site is usually hypoplastic as well. Diaphragmatic hernias are usually classified by location, uh, the most common being posterior or lateral or, bacta, or bactalec, which accounts for 80 to 90% of congenital diaphragmatic hernias. 85% uh, of these are left-sided, 10% right, with 5% being bilateral. Then there's the anterior retrosternal or parasternal, which is known as the Morgani, Two percent, which is 2% of all congenital diaphragmatic hernias. Uh, they are often asymptomatic in the neonat neonatal period and go on to develop symptoms later on. Uh, here's a case with labeling of a right-sided hernia. It was liver in the chest cavity as, long as, as well as pleural effusion and a very small echogenic hypoplastic lung. Here's another, pace, another case of a right-sided Congenital diaphragmatic hernia. You can see the blue areas where the suspected level of where the diaphragm should be. Above that, you can see liver, gallbladder, fluid, and posterior to the liver, echogenic hypoplastic lung. Well, I hope you found this video useful. Uh, this, will be go this will go along with a blog post, along with the coronavirus post and video. Uh, take care and see you guys soon.